This is a 2026 Hyundai Ioniq 9, and it has one of the best combinations of style, performance, and electric range that you can get from any car available in America today. But I'd argue that its real superpower is that it can use the thing that's right behind me, a Tesla supercharger station. That's because the Ioniq 9 is one of the first EVs in America built with a native Tesla-style North American charging standard port built right in. So how does the Ioniq 9 do when you actually have to try and charge it at a Tesla station? Let's find out. All right, before we get down to business, let's talk a little bit about what you're in for if you get an Ioniq 9. Now, up until now, all of the Hyundai and Kia EVs had a standard CCS plug just like every other non-Tesla EV in America. But ever since Tesla started opening its supercharger network up to other EVs, Hyundai and Kia, and now many other automakers have just decided to put a Tesla-style NAX plug into the car directly. So over time, Tesla's plug is probably gonna become the standard, which is what it's kind of already called anyway. And this is a good thing because it gives owners of non-Tesla EVs instant access to more than 30,000 Tesla supercharger plugs and counting, which is a real godsend on your next electric road trip. In the interim, the downside is that your life is kind of going to be adapter hell for a little bit. Here's an example. Let's take a look at this guy, which comes with a car. This is a Tesla Nax to J1772 adapter. Rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? And if you have a home charge point level two station, like I do at my house, you'll need to plug this into the car and then plug your charge point plug or whatever you have into that. And then if I'm out on the road somewhere and let's say I want to use an Electrify America station like Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 have, owners have been using forever, I need this bulkier guy right here. This is a Tesla Nax to CCS adapter. And this thing goes in where the Tesla plug is and then, you know, there's your familiar CCS charger right there. Now Tesla owners have dealt with versions of this for years because they've always had a lot of flexibility in where they can charge. They can use these adapters to plug in at an Electrify America station or a charge point station and now that's kind of the life that Ionic 9 owners are going to be living too. Is this a big deal? I don't really think so. I mean, you, it's only two adapters, and if you know which is which, you're gonna be fine. And it opens you up to a lot more charging options than you had before. Maybe over time, the Tesla plug will become the normal default plug that's on every EV charger in America. But until then, you know, get ready for uh, lots of fun with adapters. Now let's plug this thing in and see what it can do. All right, as you can see here, we're at 20% and about 57 miles. Our battery is pretty conditioned and we're ready to plug this thing in. I'm gonna go to my Tesla app right there, choose the port and hit start charging. And once that loads up, I'm gonna go outside and plug it in. Here with the Tesla plug. Oh, I'll pull the door opened. And we're gonna plug this bad boy right in. Let's see what that does. Oh, there it goes, charging started. Now, like any reasonable person, I have this car set to max out at DC fast charging at 80%. And it's currently quoting me 35 minutes to get there. 20% right now. All right, we've started out right at about 47 kilowatts and we're holding steady there for a bit while things warm up. Let's see how fast it charges and what speeds we're gonna get when we do this. We're moving a lot better now at 96.3 kilowatts and climbing. So we're getting there. Definitely not seeing the max charging speeds I hope we'd see, but uh, it's better than nothing. Oh man, we're cooking now, look at that. It very quickly jumped about 117 kilowatts, now 126 and holding. Took a little while to get there, but now we're seeing some better speeds. So while I'm waiting for this thing to charge, let's talk about what's good and bad about the NAX pivot. Moving the Tesla's plug standard opens up a lot more charging options for non-Tesla EV owners out there. Again, that's about 30,000 plugs and counting. Like they're building this stuff out pretty quickly. And that's gonna give you a lot more options on a road trip. I can personally attest to this, is that when you have an adapter or even better, a native NAX port like in this car, it's really gonna save your butt when you run out of juice and need to get somewhere quickly. That's the good news. Now the downside is that Charging speeds on some of these non-Tesla EVs may be a little different than a lot of us are used to. Let's take this Ionic 9, for example. Normally its max speed is around 237 kilowatts. That makes it a really fast charging EV. Hyundai says that it'll go from 10% to 80% on a fast charger in a breezy 24 minutes. Now that's a lot shorter than the 35 minutes I've been quoted to go from 20 to 80% on this Tesla station. So why the difference? The answer is voltage, and it's gonna make you wish you had paid more attention in high school science class. I know that I do. 
Most modern EV fast chargers operate on an 800 volt system. Let's take Electrify America, for example. That's an 800 volt charger. And when you have a car with an 800 volt electrical architecture like this Hyundai right here, that means the two are gonna work in concert to deliver some really fast charging speeds. However, Tesla's entire fast charging network is only a 400 volt system. This difference in voltage means essentially that the Ionic 9 will draw electricity at a slower rate than it would on, say, an Electrify America station. So that's your trade-off. You get access to way more chargers, and frankly, one that's a lot easier to handle, but also you might be dealing with slower speeds than you normally would if you were charging at a 350 kilowatt station from another charging provider. We're at 40%, 126.5 kilowatts. We've been holding pretty steady around that for the last few minutes, and we're at 122 miles of range, up from about 57 when I started. So not bad, I've still got about 24 minutes to go, but it's working. Not as fast as you would on a super fast EA station, but it's getting the job done. All right, so let's check in here. It's been about 12 or 13 minutes. We're at 163 miles of range and 53% battery charge. We've got 16 minutes to go to get to 80%, which will get us to 258 miles of range. Let's say earth, wind and fire, they're great. All in all, not bad, honestly. Like I said, not as lightning fast as you'd get from an Electrify America station, but in the time it's taking us to do our grocery runs, we're gonna get nice and juiced up here. All right, so let's wrap this up. And we're at 237 miles of range at a 75% charge with three minutes left to go. Honestly, really not that bad and still really holding steady at 126.5 kilowatts like we've been doing since early on. So it might be a little slower than, you know, Ionic 9 owners are used to, but at least it's really consistent. So what's my take on a car like the Ionic 9 using a Tesla station? Well, honestly, I'll take it. Sure, it's not as crazy fast as plugging into a 350 kilowatt Electrify America station. And I hope that automakers can find some way to get past that voltage difference so that they can match the speeds that they're used to on these Tesla stations over time. And I bet they'll figure it out. But for now, it gives a car like this a lot more options on the road. And that's what EV owners need. They need peace of mind, they need security, they need the idea that they can always take a road trip or go off the beaten path in some way and always have a place to juice up. That's something that Tesla owners have taken advantage of for a very long time. It's one of that company's top advantages as an EV maker. It's one of the reasons that they became for a long time, the world's largest maker of EVs. Even if the speeds aren't as good as say, Hyundai Ionic 5 or Kia EV6 owners are used to, opening this station up is just gonna open up a lot more possibilities out on the road. So I say it's a good thing. So that's how the Ionic 9 does on a Tesla supercharger station. Is a Tesla Nax port a must have on your next EV purchase? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you like what you see here, make sure and hit that like and subscribe button. For Inside EVs, I'm Patrick George.